Okay, we're now gonna go into two of the most harmonious of the passes, the knee cut and the long step. Long step pass needs to be understood in a little bit of a different way than more conventional passings that passes that you might be used to. Let's say a condition, a conventional pass is something like a Toriano pass where I grip his legs and I'm using my strength and pressure to move his legs out of the way. So I'm like actually physically manipulating his body to move it out of the way and I have to fight my muscle versus his muscle to accomplish that. The same thing is applied with a knee cut. I'm using my knee, I'm using gravity, I'm using my hands on the leg, I'm using my other hand to drive, and it's, this is pressure versus pressure. He's pushing, I'm pulling until I can eventually pass, okay? So that means that there's a conflict that has to be overcome in those passes. It's like, he has a fair, as fair of a chance of recovering as I do of passing. Now there are certain positions that don't afford him that opportunity which means that I just have the ability to instantly get past his legs. The downside of that is it means that it's done in a way that is hard to secure. So with a knee cut, if I'm fighting and we're fighting pushing versus pushing or I'm pulling myself into him, he's pushing me away, it's very obvious like who's winning that little battle. You'll know if you're making progress to get the pass or you're losing progress to get the pass and you'll know when you complete the pass because it'll feel secure. That means you finally pushed the spectrum all the way to the passing side and you can actually pass and it's very likely that you'll be able to maintain the position. Now long steps, it's a little more dynamic. There isn't this subtle battle going on that both of you are aware of. He won't expect me to move in this way and that's the key of the long step. It's almost like a element of surprise. You throw it out there, you immediately get past his legs and he's forced to do something dynamic and drastic and push and recover his legs in a way and that can open up a lot of opportunities for you as he does that. Now of course, it's, you can pull off just a clean long step pass and as a result, it's one of the most beautiful passes you'll ever see because if it's done correctly, you just go from in front of his guard to past his guard in one single movement. All right, so I'll demonstrate what a long pass, a long pass, a long step pass looks like first, okay? So the long step pass is done from a very specific body configuration. If his legs are just facing me like this, he's flat on his back, I'm not going to long step. Long step is only done when his body turns to one side or the other. So I can force him to do that just by kind of walking to one side. He kind of faces me. This is a very common guard position to play on one side like this. And this is the opportunity where I can do a long step. Normally you might do something like a cross grip here, you might try and knee cut, you might try and move into like under positions here where I'm doing stack passes, which all is very effective and should definitely be attempted. However, it's a very good idea to start off your passing sequence, which means at linking multiple passes together until one of them works, that's a passing sequence. You should start them off with a movement like a long step because it immediately sets the precedent that he is on the defensive. So you instantly gain tempo. And if you watch any of my other videos about passing, I talk about tempo constantly. And that just means that I have made him defend. And every time someone defends, I have the opportunity to be offensive again, because he did a defensive movement and there's a small period of time where he's still defending. I have an opportunity to, opportunity to attack again. So here's what a long step looks like. It's usually done from a position like this. I'm entering into his guard and he's probably doing something with his hands, getting ready to reach towards me. There's three different grip variations. I can grip at the collar here. I can grip behind the back flat, or I can grip right behind the neck here like this. Any one of these grips can be uh, used to perform a long step. Now it's very important that I don't settle. I'm not trying to like get in here, let him get grips on me, grab my leg or anything from here. I don't want a long step from here. I want to do it as I engage, before he has grips. So how I do that is I bring my knee in, and I'm just gonna wrap my hand around the side of his head here behind his back and you'll see me do it all in one motion and then we'll go through the steps. So it looks something like this. I lost my mic. Such a powerful long step. So that's what a long step looks like. So let's talk a little bit why it's effective. So when I do this movement and I catch his head and I step my leg here, you can see I'm past his legs in one movement. All I did was bring my leg over and I did some tricky stuff with my hands and my head and we'll go into that later. But if you can see, 
if he wants to recover his guard right now, he has to really try very hard to bring both his legs into me and recover because he's not gonna be able to turn into me because I have shoulder pressure. So he's forced to try and follow me with his legs, catch me with his legs, try and trap a leg to eventually recover. But all I have to do to stop that is just put my hand right here. So now if he tries to bring his legs in, he cannot. I've created a wall that he cannot pass and now he has to fight from a very bad position. He's got to try and turtle into me. He's got to try and turn away. And all I have, to, I have to do is hold on and try and secure side control. Now, a side effect of this is that as you face better and better opponents, they will see the long step coming. And as you try and do it, they'll frame and stop you from getting your head really close to his chest and face, because that's where all the control comes from. It's my head positioning, my shoulder positioning, and my shoulder pressure. So he's gonna try and block that because that's the most important thing. So this time I'm gonna do it, Tony's gonna try, try and push me off as I do it. So I cut the angle here. Let's do it actually from this side, like this. So I'm here, try and pay attention to Tony's hands. He's just gonna block at my arm and my chest. As I try and do that, he pushes me off. Now you can see I don't have control of his upper body. He can choose to recover guard by bringing his legs in front or he can get up to his knees and try and come on top and then we'd be in a scramble to like see who can end up on top. Okay, so think about this as almost like a scramble initiator that you just throw out there when there's no grips. It's a great thing to do that like if I'm battling, we're playing guard, he's got all these grips on me and I manage to break the grips, the second I re-engage is the perfect time to throw a long step out because then I'm immediately past his guard. He's forced to scramble and come from behind to try and recover his guard. And that will lead you to a lot of other opportunities. The main one being this. I'll just show you ahead of time before we get into the details. If I long step and this leg comes too close to me, I can grab it and just put my leg behind it here and then move to the other side. That's one of the most powerful passing combos that exist. It's very powerful because it counter rotates his body twisting his back. This takes away all his power to bridge, turtle, upa, recover guard. It's all killed because this leg is pressed down and my head and shoulder are pressing this way. So there's a lot of pressure on his spine. If he struggled too hard, he might even hurt himself. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you want to make sure to never miss the latest jujitsu technique uploads from this channel, hit the subscribe button. And there's also a notification bell that you can ring to make sure that you get all the notifications for everything that we do here on the channel. And bonus round, there's a text number that you can text. Go ahead and just text the word Keenan to this number and you'll get the grappling handbook, which is a guide I'm putting together to teach you how to get the most out of your training. It'll include flow charts and technique illustrations and all sorts of little tips and tricks that'll help you get more out of your time on the mat. And it's information that you probably won't be able to get through just a YouTube video. It's a little more involved, I would say.